Coming up on the Angus Report, national livestock organizations band together signing a petition requesting an exemption from mandatory electronic logging devices for truckers. How it could affect cattle shipping across the U.S. What do U.S. cattlemen need to do in order to access the Chinese beef market? Hopefully we see more ranchers become participants in, in animal ID and traceability. That's, that's the first step. Uh, as an industry, we need more cattle available. And what's your nutrition plan for your herd this fall? A few pennies a day for certain technologies can really contribute to the overall performance of the animals and bottom line for either the cow-calf producer or the feed yard industry. Then we look at one of the grand prizes offered at this year's Angus Convention. This is the Angus Report. Hello and welcome to the Angus Report. I'm Bob Cervera. Our top news this week. Organizations representing the cattle, pork, fish, and bee organizations have petitioned the U.S. Department of Transportation requesting a one-year exemption from the rule that requires all truckers to use electronic logging devices. The devices track a trucker's time behind the wheel and require drivers be limited to 11 active hours of driving. Now, once those 11 hours are reached, the law states the driver must stop and rest for 10 consecutive hours. Industry leaders argue the rule poses animal health and animal welfare issues. Drivers who disregard the arbitrary driving limitation and focus on animal well-being are then faced with a violation. Drivers who receive enough violations could lose their commercial driver's license. National Cattlemen's Beef Association President Craig Uden says a limited exemption from electronic logging devices will allow for haulers to continue to safely transport livestock while providing the livestock industry time to continue working with the Department of Transportation to find workable solutions. The American Farm Bureau, North American Meat Institute, U.S. Cattlemen's Association, Livestock Marketing Association, National Aquaculture Association and the American Beekeeping Association have all joined the petition. We'll provide you more information as the story develops. Now to shipping beef overseas. While the beef industry is one that's driven by pounds, quality is still a forefront leader. And that high quality beef the U.S. is known for producing is spurring demand across the world. As China opened its doors to U.S. beef, the United States is now racing to meet their strict requirements. Over the summer, Tyson Foods became the first meat producer to export U.S. beef to China. Among other requirements, China is accepting both boneless and bone-in beef that's both less than 30 months of age and is traceable all the way back to where it was born on the farm. Kevin Heischer of Tyson Fresh Meat says, while exports to China are beginning to ramp up, U.S. cattle producers are going to have to adopt certain practices in order to increase the supply of traceable cattle. You know, it all starts on the ranch, uh, and hopefully with, hopefully we see more ranchers become participants in, in animal ID and traceability. That's, that's the first step. Uh, as an industry, we need more cattle available to us there. As soon as they leave the ranch without that, it's, it's a non-qualifier. And then after that, we have some feeding opportunities that, that we can participate in, but at least in the value chain, we have choices to make in that regard. So that, that's a question that has to be asked at every sale. Are these animals uh, animal ID ranch certified? Uh, there's a couple of different companies that provide that service today. Uh, and, and I would guess in, in today's world and in, in days forward, that will be something that will be brought to the attention uh, for all the other producers at the sale. You know, China's the, the largest middle class uh, economy and upper class economy in the world. Having access to, to that country uh, in a larger scale is only going to benefit the industry. They're looking from, from everything from soup to bones. They're looking for the high quality prime to be served in their white tablecloth international restaurants and hotels. They're also looking for those value items that we traditionally think of in terms of the export market. Not only do they have a large middle class and a large wealthy class, they also have a lot of working class there as well. So that market has a lot of opportunities for the U.S. cattlemen. U.S. beef has a global reputation of quality. Experts say with China's doors now open, that could erode Australian beef sales into China due to the United States' cheaper cost of production. As we look slightly closer to home, discussions between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico on the North American Free Trade Agreement has not resulted in any major resolutions affecting agriculture. We look at some of the key issues facing the three countries as they attempt to modernize NAFTA. The U.S. is seeking to eliminate non-tariff barriers to agricultural exports. Currently, 
Canada imposes major restrictions on the dairy industry and is holding strong to its supply management system for dairy and poultry products. Since the original NAFTA was established, food and agricultural exports to Mexico and Canada have gone from $8.9 billion in 1993 to $38.6 billion in 2015. Agriculture has benefited from NAFTA in all three countries. However, the auto industry is at the forefront of these negotiations, and some people fear the agricultural sector could be used as a bargaining piece in the overall negotiations. The countries are also divided over Chapter 19, which allows Canada and Mexico to challenge the U.S. over decisions regarding anti-dumping and countervailing goods and services imported into the U.S. While the U.S. wants to ditch Chapter 19, Canada and Mexico are refusing to let it go, saying it provides investor security. Officials are optimistic that a modern NAFTA will be agreed upon by early 2018. While cattlemen look to begin weaning springborn calves, proper nutrition should be at the forefront of producers' minds. With vast regions of the country experiencing a drought and others fighting floods, understanding what cattle are lacking nutrition-wise is critical not only to the growth and performance of calves now, but later in their future. We spoke with Micronutrients Beef Technical Services Manager Jeff Helt at this year's Feeding Quality Forum, and he warns, simply because your management strategy worked last year or even for the past 10 years, you shouldn't get complacent with cattle nutrition. Cattle these days have changed dramatically from a genetic standpoint, and so being able to work with some kind of consultant, I think is probably, or extension educators would be the best in terms of identifying nutritional gaps that may need filled, especially from a cow-calf standpoint. Uh, we do have routines established and look at uh, budgets from a feed standpoint that kind of uh, may impact how much uh, we spend and what we spend it on. So being able to get a third party come in and really evaluate those programs, I think is critical to finding those nutritional gaps. Protein and energy nutrition are the first uh, drivers for the immune system and really contribute to being able for the defense, the body's defense, to be able to uh, fight off those disease challenges. We're learning more and more all the time about trace minerals and their importance in the immune system and what they can do. Uh, both those uh, in combination with overall management practices, uh, good management practices, can really improve health of those animals that subsequently improves performance and then the bottom line for all our producers. So if we look at sources of trace minerals and what's out there for producers to utilize, uh, we, we just need to make sure that uh, copper, zinc, and manganese would be three critical ones that are, are needed in, in both the cow-calf production system and in the feed yard production system. And so really uh, doing forage samples, feed samples from a cow-calf standpoint, working with a consulting nutritionist to look at those trace mineral levels and identify what may be missing or what may be deficient and fill in those gaps with the sources, the different sources that might be available. A few pennies a day for certain technologies can really contribute to the overall performance of the animals and bottom line for either the cow-calf producer or the feed yard industry. Health recommends taking regular pasture and feed samples in for analysis in order to know exactly what nutrients cattle are lacking and to always ensure that weaned calves receive high quality and nutrient dense feed. Consult your local veterinarian or extension specialist for additional information. Meanwhile, wildfires in the West continue to rage. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, there are almost 40 active fires, and year to date, more than 8.5 million acres have been burnt. The annual average is just more than 5.5 million acres. New numbers from the United States Department of Agriculture show the record-breaking cost of fighting wildfires has topped $2 billion just this year. The record figure has Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue pushing for the U.S. Forest Service budget to be reevaluated to allocate more funds for fire suppression. According to the Associated Press, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has granted Montana federal relief that will cover 75 percent of its firefighting costs. Many farmers and ranchers have lost land, livestock and homes from the wildfires in the past several months. With current conditions, many are saying fires won't be put out until snow falls. While the West is hoping for some much-needed moisture, the South continues to flood. Hurricane Irma brought havoc in the form of heavy rain and blustering winds to cattlemen in Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. The storm took out fences, trees, buildings, and power throughout the heart of cattle country in Florida. Many cattle producers in the affected region have reported an early start to their fall calving season in relation to the hurricane. 
Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue announced the federal government's assistance to producers who lost crops and livestock or had other damage to their operations. The USDA announced a 60-day extended deadline for farmers and ranchers affected by the storm to report livestock losses and increased feed, supply, and transportation expenses. Producers with coverage through the USDA's Risk Management Agency are urged to contact their crop insurance agent to report crop damage and file claims. Visit www.usda.gov disaster to learn more about how to help farmers and ranchers affected by the storm. When we return, how to reduce risk when purchasing cattle and how to capitalize on high quality. Then we look at one of the grand prizes at this year's Angus Convention and tell you how you could take it home. Visit Angus.media to continue watching this episode of the Angus Report. Forward. It's more than a direction. It's mandatory. Because the beef business rewards the progressive, the doers. The ones who know what it takes to go easy on cattle and never set them back. So set your eyes on the horizon, turn your back to the wind, and move your herd the only way you know. Forward. Beast of Vaccines. Always ahead. Today's beef consumer has questions. BQA has the answers. Your Beef Quality Assurance Certification allows you to share a story that assures customers that you are responsibly raising a safe, wholesome, and healthy beef supply. Becoming BQA certified just became even more convenient with a new interactive training experience that is online and available 24-7. So what are you waiting for? Get started today by visiting BQA.org. 